Today, I'm going to be showing you guys all of my Fortnite settings. And I'm not just talking about my sensitivity or my keybinds. I'm talking about every single setting there is in the game. You guys have been asking for my settings for the longest time. So I figured why not make a video where I go over all of my settings in the game and talk about each one and explain why I have the settings I have. If after watching this video, it helped you out in any way, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are very close to 300,000 subs. And don't forget to use code ZEMI in your Fortnite item shop. So before we jump into these settings, there's two things I need to explain to you guys. The first thing is that I play on mouse and keyboard, which means all the settings I'm going to go over today are going to be mouse and keyboard settings, which means there's going to be some settings that I'm not going to go over because it doesn't apply to me. And there might be some settings that I go over that may not apply to you because you play on controller. But the majority of the settings I go over shouldn't really matter on whether or not you're on controller or mouse and keyboard or whatever you play on. The other thing that I wanted to explain before we jump into the settings, which I need you guys to understand because this is very important, is that when it comes to settings settings are always going to be personal preference we choose settings that we feel most comfortable with for example i press q on my keyboard to place a wall but someone else may try that and maybe it doesn't even work for them maybe it doesn't feel comfortable or maybe they they just can't work with it the point i'm trying to make is after looking at my settings today or anyone else's settings maybe your friends don't think if you copy exactly all those settings you're just going to magically become a better player yes if you look at someone else's settings you might get ideas and figure out your own settings and maybe some of those settings if you copy them actually will work for you but just know that settings for the most part are personal preference is something you have to figure out yourself now that we have all that cleared up let me show you guys my settings so the first page right here is just graphic and video settings and this one i'm not going to go too much into detail because this really depends on what platform you play on what kind of a pc you have a lot of different things but the basic things i play on 240 fps because i have a 240 hertz monitor and my pc can handle it and when we come down here i have my color blind mode on and i have it on triton nope with strength level eight and to be honest the reason for this is because back i believe in chapter one or chapter two if you had a certain color blind mode on you could actually see certain things or especially in the storm a lot easier i don't really think it helps that much anymore i just never really changed it and kind of got used to it so for the graphics quality i have every single thing low and off except my view distance i keep view distance on epic because it actually helps you see things from further away for example if i had this all the way on near if there was a pile of loot really far away i would only see the colors and not actually see what the item are but when i have it on epic i'll actually be able to see the items and be able to mark them and it just helps you see things from far away a lot easier now the next page the game settings this is actually where we dive into some game settings that'll actually affect your game so the very first thing right here is toggle sprint and i have this one on now what this does is when i press forward and when i'm moving forward it's automatically sprinting it basically means i don't have to press an extra button to start running i just automatically start sprinting when i'm moving forward Next thing is auto open doors. This one automatically opens doors as soon as you get near them. Next up, we have mental activation. And this one I have on hold jump instead of hold forward, which means when I go up to a ledge, if I want to mantle the ledge, all I have to do is just hold jump and I'll just mantle. But if I have it on hold forward, all I have to do is just jump and hold forward. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but I like it on hold jump because I feel like on hold forward, I actually accidentally mantle things I don't mean to. Going down over here to hold to swap pickup. I have this one off. The reason I have it off is because I kind of like to organize my inventory manually, just drag things out or replace items. And I feel like when I have this one on, it kind of messes me up. Auto pickup weapons. Once again, I have this one off because of the same reason. Now going down here, we have preferred item slot. And I feel like there might be a lot of you guys that actually don't know about this. And what you can do with this setting is you can actually assign different weapons to different slots in your inventory. For example, for my inventory, I like to have my AR first, my shotgun second, and if I have an SMG, I have that in the third slot. My slot number four is for snipers or for shockwave hammers or for bows. And the very last slot, I like to keep my heals and consumables. And that's exactly how I have it set up right here. For example, slot number three, I have it set for SMGs. That means if I pick up an SMG, that SMG will automatically go to my third slot because that's where I have it assigned to. I have reset building choice and pre-edits off. And I know this right here says on just because it's worded weirdly it says disable pre-edit option which i have on which basically means i have pre-edits off turbo building i have this one on of course for some reason if you don't have this on please turn this on confirm edit on release i have this one on and i feel like this is something a lot of people don't like having on when this first came to the game i turned this on and it just made me so much better at building editing anything and it does take some time to get used to but i really feel like if people turn this on and actually get used to it it makes you so much better at building 
the rest of the settings on this page are not too important right here the next page is game ui and this is the things you actually see on your screen for example your crosshair the size of your inventory or your health bar so reticle of course i have that one on this is your crosshair now reticle ammo indicator i have this one off for two reasons first i don't like having too many things on my screen and second i kind of just know when i'm about to run out of ammo i don't really need an indicator and also for most of the weapons in fortnite it actually makes a different sound when you're about to run out of ammo and when you need to reload Damage numbers, I have this one on cumulative instead of list. And basically what cumulative is, is if I'm hitting someone, instead of it showing 30, 30, 30, it shows 30, 60, 90, and so on. For reticle damage feedback, I have this one on hit. There is another option called hit and icons. I think for hit and icon, it actually shows you a shield icon when you're hitting someone for shield. But I don't need that because if I'm hitting someone for shield, I'll know because it's blue instead of white. I have HUD scale on 90%, and this is the size of everything you see on your screen. For example, your health bar, your inventory. I have every single thing here on except two things, latency debug stats and runtime performance stats. Runtime performance only applies to creative, so it doesn't really matter. And latency debug stats is just a bunch of statistics that I don't really need to see on my screen. Next page does not apply to me once again because I am on mouse and keyboard. So none of these settings really apply to me. I'm going to go ahead and skip over these. Now, this page right here is where things get a little interesting. I'm not even exaggerating when I say this, but asking what my sensitivity is, is the most question I've been asked in my entire life. And this is where I finally show you guys my sensitivity, man. So for X axis and Y axis, I have this one on 5.5%. And for targeting and scope sense, I have these on exactly the same 42.9%. Targeting sensitivity is when you just aim down your sight when you're aiming down your shotgun your pistol scope sensitivity is when you're actually looking through a scope for example a sniper rifle or a dmr there is some guns that i honestly don't really know if it counts as targeting or scope for example the aug the burst from last season but because i have these two exactly the same it doesn't really make a difference for me but there's also your mouse dpi speed and this one is actually not an in-game setting this setting is actually in your mouse software which you have to download on your computer now depending on the mouse you have this program is going to be different for everyone but i do use a super light and i use 800 dpi so i have lock input method as mouse and the only reason is because i use a third party program for my double movement and we actually do have the option to use double movement in the game now which is this right here custom diagonals and the reason i have this one off is because for some reason when i use the in-game double movement i run into an issue where every time i'm gliding when i go left or right it makes my character look up. It's a really weird bug. And when I do figure this out, I'll actually be using these settings right here, the in-game settings, and I'll be turning this off up here. Now, next page is controller options. And once again, I am on keyboard and mouse, but there's actually a very important setting that for some reason is under controller options, even though this applies to anyone, if you play on keyboard and mouse or, or anything. And that setting is slide hold time right here. And what this setting is, it's basically how long you have to hold your slide keybind in order to slide. I believe the default is 0.15, but I did turn this down to 0.12. And basically for this setting, the lower you have this value set as, the less time it takes for you to hold your slide keybind in order to slide. For example, I have my slide as left control, which we'll go over later in my keybinds. But with this setting right here, I just have to tap my left control and I'll slide as long as I'm running. But for example, if I had this all the way at 0.25, now if I'm sprinting and let's just say I accidentally press left control, I would actually not slide because now I have to hold down left control for quite a bit in order to start sliding but I don't like to hold and I like to just tap and slide because it helps my movement. So I have this one on 0.12. Once again, very important setting, which I feel like a lot of people don't know about, but the rest of these settings are actually all controller settings, which doesn't apply to me once again. So I'm going to go ahead and skip these. Next page is all audio and volume settings. And this is just really going to be different for everyone. But there's one thing I want to go over. Visualize sound effect. And I have this one on. When you have this one on, you actually get visual icons on your screen for different sounds. For example, if there's someone running near you, you'll actually see footstep icons on your screen. It does actually give you an advantage in a lot of different scenarios. For example, if somebody's healing near you, you'll actually see that icon on your screen. And if you had this off, a lot of the times you just would not be able to hear that. The reason I turned this on is once again, because it does give you a lot of advantages in different scenarios, but also because I wasn't hearing things properly. For example, sometimes I just wasn't hearing footsteps. So I turned this on to help me out and and it actually does. Going to the next page, we have the keybinds. Now, this one's going to be a lot, so 
get ready. The first four right here is running forward, left, backwards, and right. And you'll see I actually have these not bound. And the reason is because of the double movement program I mentioned earlier. Because I don't use the in-game double movement, I actually have to have these unbound or else it would mess me up. But when I go back to the in-game double movement setting, I'll have this as W, A, S, D, which is just default for basically everyone. I have jump to spacebar. I have sprint to left shift. I have auto run bound to middle mouse. So when I press my middle mouse, I'll start auto running. For some reason, numlock is bound to an alternative keybind. I'm not really sure why I don't use this. So I have my crouch and slide, as I mentioned earlier, to left control. Going down to combat, I have my fire, which is shooting as to my left mouse button and targeting, which is just aiming down your sight as right mouse button. Reload is R and for use, I actually have two different keybinds and I'll explain why. The reason is because this actually gives you an advantage over your opponent when you're trying to pick up a gun. For example, and I'm sure this happens to everybody, a game is just starting and you're landing on a gun or a chest. And a lot of the time, a different player is landing on that same gun or that same chest. But for me, because I have interact bound to E and mouse wheel up, when I land on that gun, I can press E and mouse wheel wheel up at the same time and I'll have a slight advantage over my opponent and I'll get that gun. But this doesn't work all the time because ping actually plays a huge factor in this too. But if there are settings that you know that can give you the edge over your opponent, you have to make sure you're always using them and this is one of them. Harvesting tool, which is your pickaxe, I have that set to one. And my inventory slot one to five, I have bound to the numbers two through six. Now going down to building keybinds, and as most of you guys know, I don't really play a lot of building anymore. But when I do, and before zero builds, these were all my build binds. So my wall is bound to Q and my floor is bound to F and my stairs and cone are actually bound to the two side buttons on my mouse. There's actually something very important going on here and I don't know if you guys know this already but it is a lot better to utilize your mouse buttons when it comes to your building binds. Let's just say I had all four of my buildings bound on my keyboard. Now this would make it a lot harder when I'm building because I have to only use my left hand on my keyboard to press all these four things but when I have two on my keyboard and two on my mouse now I can actually use both hands which is a lot more optimal optimal and it helps you out in your fights in your building in everything building edit i have this one set as b and i know a lot of people always ask me how do i edit with b and you guys remember how at the beginning of the video i told you guys settings are all personal preference this is a perfect example right here the reason i use b and the reason why b is comfortable to me and not a lot of people is because i actually play with my keyboard at a vertical angle and i'll try to show you guys here but instead of my keyboard being horizontal it's actually like this when I play. And because of that, and because of my hand placement, B is actually very, very easy and comfortable for me to hit. You guys are gonna notice I also have an alternative keybind for editing, which is mouse wheel down. And that's because of this setting right down here. Reset building edit. And you guys also see I have mouse wheel down also as an alternative keybind for resetting edits. And this is basically for resetting walls a lot faster. Let's just say I have an opponent that's boxed up and I take their wall. And now I edit the wall to shoot them and I wanna reset the wall. Wall. All I have to do is just scroll down on my mouse wheel and it automatically resets my build. And that's exactly why I have both editing and resetting bound to mouse wheel down. Because when I look at any building that I own, when I scroll down on my mouse wheel, it'll edit and reset it all in a matter of just seconds. I'm going to go over the next couple things quickly because these aren't really that important. I have placing a marker as G. I have emoting set to P. Once again, because I play vertically on my keyboard, I like to have it away from my hand so I don't accidentally emote in the middle of a fight. Now, going down a little bit further here, we see cursor mode. This is basically your inventory. I have this one bound to left alt. Once again, because of the way I play with my keyboard and my hand placement, it's very easy for me to press left alt and pull up my inventory. Map is bound to M and down here, DBNO carry and DBNO place, I have bound to V and F. And this is basically for knocked players, whether it's enemies or your teammates. If I want to carry them, I press V. And if I want to just place them back down, I press F. Now for the rest of the settings here, guys, these are all going to be vehicle settings and creative settings. And first of all, I don't really play a lot of creative. And secondly, half of these vehicles are not even in the game. And even when they were, I don't don't think I've touched any of the vehicle settings. These are all just default settings, so I'm not really going to go over all of these. Next page, controller settings doesn't apply to me. The last page right here, guys, I'm also not really going to go over because this doesn't really affect your game and it's just all about social settings, like for example, your notifications or friend requests. And that's really it, guys. That is all of my settings in Fortnite. I believe I went over every
every single thing there is and tried my best to explain it to you guys. And the reason I really wanted to make this video is because you guys have been asking a lot, but also because I genuinely believe that this video can help a lot of you guys out because when it comes to settings in Fortnite, there's a lot of different settings in Fortnite that I feel like people don't really know they exist, or even if they do, they might not know what it does. So I really wanted to make this video to not only show you guys what my settings are and why I use certain things in my settings, but also try to make you guys aware of some settings. And I don't even want to say 99% sure because I'm 100% sure that every single one of you guys that watched this entire video learned at least one thing or had one thing that I mentioned in this video that helped you out. And if that's the case, I need you guys to go to your item shop and make sure you guys are using creator code Zemi. And once again, if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you guys out in any way, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next settings video, which who knows when that'll be, whenever I change my settings or if there's new settings in the game, I'll see you guys in the next one.